Thank you, respected chairman, sir, Dr. Tatyal and Dr. Bharti. Dear friends, good evening. And thank you, Ajanta, for bringing me here uh, with all of you in this beautiful evening. And uh, uh, thank you, all the seniors and the colleagues. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is saving needle microcapsulotomy and intumescent pearly mature white cataracts. We do not have any financial interest in the subject matter of this presentation. We all know that, that the intumescent pearly white cataract is one of the very commonly encountered situation in surgical practice of all of us. And many a times we get into trouble uh, because of this situation. And this could have a different kind of presentation because it could have a, we could have a hyperhydrated uh, fluffy cortex, we could have a swollen flocculent cortex, and uh, many times you have a partial cortical liquefaction and many times you have a complete liquefaction of the cortex where the nucleus is sinking down. And uh, this can be confirmed with the help of a good clinical examination with the biomicroscope or with the OCT images because OCT images would tell us uh, many of the features of these uh, cataract with different types of the intumescent white cataract presentation. But whatever is the presentation of these white cataract, the most important point in these cataract is they have a very thin and fragile capsular pack and they have a very high internal intercular pressure. So this is the very important point we need to look into these uh, whenever we come across with this uh, white cataract. And what happens actually when you puncture these white cataracts, you could, you would see a volcanic eruption of this uh, intralenticular fluid coming out of the area where you have punctured. And uh, this volcanic eruption would also lead a disruptive force, the point where you have punctured the capsule. So these two factors are very, very important and many times what happens when you simply puncture the anterior capsule, the, the clear uh, linear cut which we have created on the anterior capsule starts widening and it shifts to the periphery and you get a complete anterior capsular tear in the form of the Argentinian flag sign. The Argentinian flag sign was first described by the Perone in year 2000, long, long back. And he actually put forward the concept why it happens. He said it's basically because of the raised interlentricular pressure, which I have already shown. And uh, this raised interlinear pressure could be in a different form. You have a posterior to anterior compartment system if you have a immature uh, intermittent cataract. And uh, this high pressure anterior compartment and uh, propelling posterior compartment and along with the forward thrust of the nucleus, it hits on the back of the, uh, back of the capsule and the tear which you have created on the capsule starts opening up and you get into the problem of the Argentinian flag sign. This was one of the most uh, important and most com common complication in the intumescent white cataract and which was described by Perone. And uh, the important point is, if you look at the incidence, incidence has been from 3.85 to 28.3% in intumescent cataract, the extension of the capsular tear to the periphery. But what is important is, it's not only the extension of the tear, the anterior capsular tear, the important point is 7 to 24% of the cases the tear could extend into the posterior capsule. So you get into the problem with the posterior capsular tear. And you, if you get a posterior capsular tear, then you get into the problem of the, many of these complications like vitreous loss and nucleus drop also. So many techniques have been described to reduce the pressure before we start the capsular axis. Uh, one of the very common technique Dr. Mohan Rajan has uh, described is the puncture axis. And uh, this we also have been practicing, but I have come out with a very little simpler technique, very, very simple technique. And uh, one of the technique uh, is a small needle aspiration technique. We all have been practicing in our clinical practice when we come across with the, these intermittent white cataracts. And this involves puncturing the anterior capsule with a small hypodermic needle and then aspirate the fluid out of the capsular bag so that you decompress the bag and start the capsular axis once the decompression is complete. But many times what we have seen is even during the small needle aspiration also, the moment you puncture the anterior capsule, the tear which you create with the needle starts extending to the periphery in the form of the Argentinian plaques. And this we have seen in many of these cases. So. We had a uh, thinking, uh, the pre 
supposition that it's not only the raised ventricular pressure which could lead to the extension of the capsular tear to the periphery. There has to be some other factor responsible for this. So, according to the saving needle microcapsulotomy, this is the article which we have published in JCRS. According to this technique, we said that it's not it's not the raised ventricular pressure the only factor. The, one of the factors is definitely with the raised ventricular pressure and the fragile capsular back. But the another factor is the kind of puncture you make on the anterior capsule before you start the capsular axis. Whether you use hypodermic needle or you use the capsular axis forceps to raise the flap and then start the, the axis. So these two important steps when we are making the puncture of the anterior capsule and raising the flap is very, very important because the kind of puncture you make on the anterior capsule is very important. Because if what happens when you use uh, the hypodermic needle, it, the hypodermic needle, the tip is like a knife. It's a sharp knife. When you puncture the capsule, it makes a linear cut on the capsule. So linear cut has a side, the, the side of the linear cut is open. So it's not a, it's a regular uh, opening of the anterior capsule. And what happens, this, if you have a, this kind of linear cut and there is a raised interlinear pressure, so the raised interlinear pressure would put a, put a disruptive force on the sides of this linear cut. So this pressure would easily open up uh, the linear cut. So you can see in this uh, uh, animation video, because the moment you puncture, the linear cut starts opening up and it extends to the periphery in the form of the Argentinian flax. And this is what happens. So linear cut is important. So what we have seen that this extension of the capsular tear always happens from the edges of the linear cut. It never happens along the perpendicular to the linear cut. So that is very, very important point. It means that linear cut has to do with the extension of the capsular tear to the periphery and convert into the Argentinian flax end. So we had a hypothesis, instead of making a linear cut of the anterior capsule, if we could make a hole on the anterior capsule, as we have been doing with the micro, the mini capsular axis. But in mini capsular axis also you have to puncture. So the, 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 before you start the mini capsular axis, your capsule start extending to the periphery. So there has to be some techniques where we make a hole on the anterior capsule before we lift the flap for the capsular axis. So we devised a uh, device, so this is called as the saving needle micro capsulotome. Now this capsulotome, you can see the tip of this capsulotome is round and pointed. It's not like a knife, it's not like a needle, it's a round. So when you puncture the anterior capsule with this device, you'll get a hole formation on the anterior capsule instead of cutting the capsule. So, like if you use this device, the the the, the, uh, the hypodermic needle, so you make a linear cut. But if you use this device, you make a hole on the anterior capsule. So this makes all the difference. So if you use this device, you make a hole, and the fluid will start coming out of the that hole. So this hole is regular and concentric. So it has a greater resistance against any kind of forces which is there in the interlenticular space or the forces created by the evacuation or the the, uh, the eruption of the fluid which is coming out of the hole. And uh, this is what you can see because the moment you make the hole, the fluid will start coming out of the, uh, the capsular bag. And when the fluid comes out of the capsular bag, your capsule decompresses. So once you decompress the capsular bag, then you can very easily start the capsular axis. You can make a one puncture on the anterior capsule or you can make multiple depending on the situation. If you have a multiple fluid pockets in the lens, then you have to make multiple puncture. But these multiple punctures have to be within the 5 millimeter zone. Don't go beyond the 5 millimeter zone because if you go beyond the 5 millimeter zone, then the capsular axis would become difficult. So I'll just show you a few videos, very small, small videos few seconds video. So you need to do a good uh, uh, staining of the anterior capsule, pressurize the anterior chamber with a good viscoelastic and this is the device you have to use and uh, this device will have to enter through the main pot and it should be kept vertically, stayed vertically on the anterior capsule. You can make this device with a simple saving needle also. You have to bend the tip like I'm doing here, a simple saving needle can be bent and you can use the simple saving needle also. So take it inside, puncture, 
and uh, you can see the moment you puncture the fluid will start coming out of the the interlenticular space and uh, this fluid which comes out decompresses the back you can do a milking technique to completely evacuate the fluid out of the capsular back and uh, this is another case i'm using a little larger gauge of uh, the needle and puncturing the anterior capsule you can see the how the fluid comes out you can use a straight needle also you can put the straight needle and puncture the anterior capsule the fluid will start coming out of the capsular bag now this kind of hole what you make you can see the hole formation and uh, this is an uh, intumescent cataract with a semi soft uh, anterior uh, cortex so you may not get the fluid out of the capsular bag but then you make a good uh, hole on the anterior capsule which will decompress the pressure which is there inside so many times the pressure would come out and uh, once you decompress the back inflate the anterior chamber very well then you can start the capsular axis from that point itself just tear the capsule now you don't have to worry for the raised interlenticular pressure and you don't have to worry for the extension so you can very simply create the capsular axis with the help of the forceps or with the help of the the needle so this is how you complete the axis and uh, depending on the type of the uh, nucleus you have to proceed with the phaco emulsification so this uh, technique this year got the best film award also in uh, jcrs uh, <laughs> ascrs conference in uh, washington this year thank you very much